Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, mic check. Lockout man in the building. Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? Lockout men right here in the building. Yes, sir. I am back with another podcast for you guys today. I am the host of Lockout Men Podcast. And if you like content like this, yo, all you got to do is hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that comment, hit that share. And hit that bell for more content like this. I am here to come with some good podcast interviews. Make sure you check out that pay, that playlist in the in the Lockout Men podcast YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? I talked to a whole bunch of you guys out there. And so far, so far, the interviews, the conversations has been lovely. Yo, make sure you guys check that out. And if you guys want to come on. And chop it up with me. I'm cool with that. Hit me up in the Lockout Men podcast at gmail.com or over at Instagram in the DM. Or if you can find me on Facebook, yo, let's get together in the messenger. Yo, talking, that's what I like to do. I like, I'm interested in what you guys, you know, what you guys do, your lives, your trucking lives or whatever that y'all want to get out there and share to the world. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, what can I, what can I say for today? I I really can't I really can't say nothing too much, man. Uh, today's topic is just is just pretty much all over. All right, so let's talk about my day so far. So, you know, and this is on par with a couple of questions that I found in the Facebook group too. So, so let's talk about my day, man. So last night or yesterday, I say around four ish, four ish or something like that. I get a load to go pick up, and um, I I go to I believe it was Niagara. I think that was the name of the place I went to. Bottled water, forty five thousand pounds. Woo, man! It 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 feels heavy too when you when you roll down when you roll down the road, man. I'm telling you, it feels heavy. But um, I get my load, and I I, I got an eight hour I got an eight hour commute to the receiver. Now picking up my load at four o'clock in the evening, I did not get loaded until sometime after seven. I say it was like maybe around 7.30, close to 8 p.m. Now, I, to be honest with you guys, I hate loads like this because I was already up all day. Um, and unfortunately, my fleet manager wasn't able to get anything sooner after I dropped my first load. But I had to wait until after my 10 hour anyway, because I drove through the night the, uh, the night before. So I get my load. I'm driving. I say it's around, hmm, I say around 12 o'clock or something like that. I'm pretty much still doing pretty good time. I was going to end up getting to the receiver at maybe about 3 a.m. or something like that. And I was going to post up there. Uh, wait till they open up, get unloaded, finish out my 10 and get my next load that'll take me home. Unfortunately, my airline or my trailer popped. All of a sudden, I start hearing a gush of air and I'm like, oh, OK, that's not good. That's not good. So I'm pulling over I'm pulling over to the side and get out the truck. Go back there to the back, and lo and behold, the the airline that was to the brake chamber popped. So of course, if one airline pops, that means you have you you have no brakes. Period. So I called up uh, breakdown. Luckily for luckily for me, breakdown was able to get uh, road service out there quickly, but it was still. It was still, you know, still about an hour to maybe about an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, he got out there, got me done. And I'll say I had maybe about th 
four hours with maybe about five or four and a half hours to get to the shipper. Now, it's unfortunate that you do so many miles and you're only about 30 minutes or 30, about 30 minutes or 30 miles away from the receiver. Now, could I PC the rest of the way there? Theoretically, no, because you're not, it, it's, it's against HO, HOS policy or regulations to forward the forward the load to the destination all right and that's kind of unfortunate now i know some of you people out there do it <laughs> you know what i'm saying sometimes you can muddle it but if you get caught by dot or you get caught by a state trooper or you get caught uh, by an officer or something like that, of course, you're going to have to take that consequences. Everything you do has consequences. Just think about that. Now, lo and behold, I, as much as I really wanted to really, really get it there, I mean, damn it, man, 30 minutes, 30 miles, 30 miles, 30 minutes. I really wanted to get it there, but you just, it, it, it can't happen. It can't happen. And, and that's on par to what I was saying. I was talking to shape uh, about a couple of days ago and she was saying that, you know, there's a hustle in trucking. Trucking is a hustle. If you don't get up in time, or if you don't get up to make that delivery, it's it's a hustle. Well, considering the fact that I don't think it's a hustle because you're working on e-laws. Now, just, just say for the sake of imagining, just imagine if I was on paper. Now, see, if I was on paper laws, maybe... Now, I'm not giving you guys no idea, so don't don't take this. Don't come on here and say, oh, well, lockout men said that we can um lockout men said that we can uh 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 make it to our destination if we was on paper laws. I'm just saying there's some cowboys out there that would have that would have that would have got it there. I'm just saying. But on e laws though, I, I don't think that's possible on e laws because e laws pretty much make sure of the hours that you have to drive. And if you only have 45 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes left on your clock and you got maybe 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to go. What can you do? Now, I know some of you guys have some ideas. I mean, we all do. Right? Don't get me wrong. It's don't get me wrong. It's trucking. We we all did. We we all did some muddle, some meddling. But it was a question in the Facebook group that was asked, how much PC time do a company uh, give you or how much PC time do you actually have? Well, personal convenience, to my understanding, is unlimited. Now, I, I, I may be wrong. I'm just saying this to my understanding. But it's to the company's discretion of how much personal convenience you have. Now, once my time starts or the time finish or whatever you can use personal conveyance to go to the store to go to the mall to go and get you something to eat go get breakfast uh probably do your 
your uh, dental, your medical, your, you know, probably anywhere that you can imagine to go without going on duty if it's not job related. Now, I know that for a fact. If it's not job related, then you pretty much could use personal convenience. All right. But it's to the company's discretion of how much time that personal conveyance is. Theoretically, personal conveyance is only for to get you to the nearest uh, safe haven or the nearest parking safely. You know, you, you get to some of these shippers and receivers and they they absolutely tell you that you can't be on their property after you get finished. Loading or uh, loading or unloading, and you gotta go, but you can't move the truck. If you move the truck, you you go into violation, and then you have to do a another ten hour reset. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Some companies give you give up to two hours, maybe. Some companies only give you like. 50 miles. Some companies give you 75. You know, you got to you got you, you, you got you to gotta use personal conveyance and don't take advantage of it because some companies don't give you personal conveyance at all. You know, some companies you got to call into safety or call your dispatcher and be like, yo, uh, I'm out of hours. I'm stuck at the shipper, but the shipper really wants me to get going. Okay. Uh, we'll set you for 15 miles, 20 miles down the way. Oh, okay. All right. Now, when I worked it for U.S. Express, they they didn't have personal conveyance at all. They It wasn't nowhere in there. And I was in some precarious situations. I mean, I literally had to pull off to the side of the road and 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 shut down like right then and there because I ain't had no more hours. I had I remember one time that I had to call uh I had to call a breakdown to actually send me a tow truck to tow me to the closest truck stop. And all they had to do was just assign me some personal conveyance time or just, you know, put that in my in my uh, in my thing. Now, see, throughout my five years of driving, I never got a bad report, uh, DOT report, maybe one. But that that was that was washed, but never got a bad report, especially for my hours of service, because I was always afraid that. If I get pulled over and they see a violation on my hours of service, I'm, I'm afraid of that ticket. I'm afraid of the CSA score. I'm afraid of having that on my license, which is not on my license, but I'm, I'm afraid of it. So I always stop. But the 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 couple of companies that I worked for previously, like I worked for J&R Shrugal, they had personal conveyance, but you have to you have to log out. And then log back in and then put in the uh, reason box what was the reason why you got off the clock or whatever the case. Now, currently, you know, I got personal convenience and I can use it whenever to my discretion. All right. Maybe I could have used it last night when I when I got when when I ran ran out of hours and I only got. I only got 30 miles to go. <laughs> 30 miles to go, man. That is crazy. So think about that uh, personal convenience. What you want to do is not take advantage of it. You know what I'm saying? If you have personal convenience, don't take advantage of it. All right. You know, if your company gives you the discretion of using personal convenience, don't take advantage of it. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you don't have a load or something like that and 
you know, you use the truck for your for your personal reason. You know, you go to Walmart, you go to the movies, you take your girl out to dinner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then, yeah, you can use personal conveyance. You know, if you get pulled over and be like, yo, I'm not on the I'm not on the clock. I'm off duty. I don't have a load and I'm bobtailing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, just just use that to your uh to your discretion. All right, so I went to Facebook, of course. You know, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups, um, uh, black truck, uh, black trucking groups, uh, disgruntled trucking groups, uh, twisted trucking groups on Facebook, and I come across a whole lot of comments and a whole lot of questions, man. And it is, it it is. It is funny. So this one question pops up and I, I I would love or I would I would like if you guys don't mind, I would like to respond to it. Now, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to, you know, put this in in paraphrase because he. Um, he he's I, I guess he's typing so fast that, you know, got to keep up. Celsius. It's some good sparkling water right here. Uh all right, so let's bring it up. All right. All right. So uh this is from a gentleman in the OTR Truckers Advice News Weather and Reports Group. And it says he's feeling furious. I guess this is with his wife or something like that. But here we go. He says, man, I, he said, man, I, but instead of, but it is, man, I put my two weeks notice in last week to get home and clean out my truck. And just now, and just wait, and just now I got a load to go home, but then they called me and said they needed the truck and took him off the load that was going home. They told him to come into the office and clean off and clean out his truck there and find his way home from Nebraska. I mean, Nebraska. He stays in Maine. Not to mention that he only made $400 last week because the truck broke down and he had to pay his utility bills. All right. So now he don't have no money for a rental to uh he don't have no money for a rental to go home so he's pretty much stranded out in nebraska the company that he's going to obviously you know being the truck driver you got your cdls you could pretty much leave you could pretty much set up an orientation while you're still with the present company so that when you leave present company you automatically go into a new company but uh but the company that he's going to doesn't offer a rental car. So I'm assuming they offer uh Greyhound or or in this case, I hope a plane. You know. Um he said he got a plane ticket. Yeah, he said he got he said when he get the he's he got the plane tickets and he's about three hours from the airport. Plus, he have a TV and a microwave and a whole bunch of stuff in the truck. Couple of comments on here. So let me just give uh, let me just give my comment right quick. Bruh, listen, I, 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 I will stress this to almost every new driver that's coming in. And every driver thereafter that's already with a company and thinking about switching companies. All right. Now, a lot of people say, yo, don't give don't don't give your two weeks notice or nothing like that. I'm on the fence. I kind of agree. And then I disagree. All right. I agree that you don't give them your two weeks notice prior to you going home cleaning out the truck. All right. So this is what you this is what you do right quick. You you say, hey, I need to go home. 
uh, I need to go home or whatever the case may be. All right. So you get that set up already. Now, once you go home, then you clean out your truck. You clean out your truck. And then, you know, once you come back from home time, then you tell them, hey, um, I need to get routed up to the uh, to the terminal. Um, and while I'm up there, um, you know, I, I either turn the keys in or or give you my two weeks. All right. That to me, I think that would be a lot easier than letting the company know right off the rip. Hey, uh, I'm giving my two weeks. So that gives the company ample time to pretty much F you. You know what I'm saying? OK, well, instead of sending you home, we want you to come up all the way up to Nebraska to clean out your truck and you're going to get stuck. You see what I'm saying? You're going to get stuck. You got a whole bunch of shit in your truck and you, you're going to have to haul that stuff with you. All right. That's that's one thing. Another thing is don't ever get comfortable with a company. I learned that. I, I learned that, you know what I'm saying, throughout my throughout my years in trucking. Don't get comfortable with any company. Keep your your items in your truck to a limit. You know what I'm saying? I, I understand if you're a type of person that want to cook in your truck and you want to have all the essentials in your truck and all like that. I get that. But through from what I have learned and throughout my years, years of trucking. I, I don't have a TV in my truck. I don't have a microwave in my truck. I used to have a gang of clothes in my truck, but I don't have that in there no more. I used to have a gang of hats in my truck, but I don't have it in there no more. I don't want to get comfortable in a truck anymore. You see what I'm saying? So that if and when something happens that that either forces me to make a decision or something happens that I have to get out after making the decision, then I know I won't have that much travel package that I would need. I mean, that that comes with me. I got my go bag. I got my go bag. I got my computer bag and I got a backpack. Pretty much everything that's in the truck could fit in those bags. Backpack, computer bag and a go bag. And I'm done. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. It says it's time for me to go. Uh uh. Where's that coming from? Oh my God. I had to turn that down because it says, uh, it says it's time for me to go. It ain't time to go. It ain't time to go yet, is it? Is it time to go? It is not time to go yet, y'all. Not time to go at all. I still got a couple of minutes and I do have a I still got a couple of minutes, y'all. <laughs> it ain't time to go. But anyway. Anyway, but that's that's what's that's my advice. Don't get comfortable in a truck. Now, you said that, you know, you had to pay bills. You only made four hundred dollars and all like that. That's cool. That's understandable. I mean, especially if you're a rookie trucker and you're with a starter company, of course, you're not going to get paid that much a week. You might not get that many miles a week or whatever the case, but you should have some backup residual money, period. If a company gets gets like that and force you to bring the truck back up to the terminal, you have no choice but to bring the truck back up to the terminal. You can't turn around and take the truck home anyway. They can cut off your fuel card and they can call the police and say, hey, uh, one of our drivers is illegally driving our truck. And you'll even be in more trouble than that because you might get an abandonment. Even though you're not abandoning the truck, but if you get pulled over by the cop and get arrested, 
then yeah, you abandon the truck. So always keep some residual money on you. I, I say maybe about three, four hundred dollars in residual money. Always have a credit card. Have a backup credit card. You know, you can go to Credit One and fill out a credit application and get yourself a three hundred dollar credit limit credit card. Capital One, you know, you can get yourself a five hundred dollar credit limit credit card. All you know, have a credit card because when you go and rent a car anyway, you need a credit card. They either need a debit card or a credit card, preferably a credit card, because with a debit card, it's a little bit more of an issue to rent a car under your debit card. But if you have a credit card, then yeah. I mean, if you have family members that can get a credit card for you and, you know, have you as a as a authorized user on said credit card, then I would suggest you do that. You you if you get into situations like my man right here, you know, he's he's three he's three hours away and he can't get a he can't get a, a rental car. And as I said, and as he said, he got a whole bunch of stuff in the truck. Get yourself a credit card, man. I'm just saying. All right. Get yourself a credit card. Now, a couple of people in the comments, like this guy right here says, ride that bitch until it runs out of fuel and then ditch it and take your shit and run. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let me do it again. Don't do that. All right? No, no, you, you don't do that. He said, ride that bitch until the fuel runs out. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Like I said before, it's not your truck, bro. It's the company's truck. And if they say bring that truck to the yard or to the terminal, you have to bring that truck back to the yard and to the terminal, all right? If you ditch the truck, if you leave it at a, at a, at a TA pilot or whatever, you're abandoning the truck, and you don't want that on your DAC report. They'll, they, they will quickly put that on your, DAC, on your DAC report, and it pretty much will blackball you, pretty much. I'm just saying. This guy right here says, sometimes it doesn't pay to give notice. You should request home time. Then once you get home, tell the, tell the company that you're not coming back out. Now, I agree with that sentiment right there. And that's what I said before. Have them to route you home so you can clean out your truck. And then when you come back on, you can say, hey, I'm putting in my two weeks notice. Drive out your two weeks, take the truck back to where they need it, where they need it. Bam, boom, bam. You're done. This one right here says, ask the company that you're going to. A lot of them will send a cab, taxi after you, after you buy, I mean, after they buy your plane ticket, which is true. You know, company that you're going to can, you know, get you a cab, Uber or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And then you can go over to the airport, get, you know, get to orientation and boom, you'll be in a new company and in a new truck. This guy right here says my company left me stranded 980 miles from home. Companies will do that. I mean, if they really want to get nasty, companies will do that. They have if if I'm from Ohio. And. Luckily for me, when I left JNR Schwugel, I left it at the terminal in Ohio. All right. And I was able to get home. I was only a couple of hours from home. But imagine if they would have had me to bring that truck all the way up to New Orleans, Minnesota. I mean, imagine that. And now I had to find a way from New Orleans, Minnesota to get home on my dime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With shit, a lot of shit in my truck. Let me give you a perfect example. Go to uh, Abandon. Uh, that's the name. That's the title name of my video uh, when I was with U.S. Express. 
they had they routed me. Now this I, I was green. I was a greenhorn. Didn't know no better. I'm thinking I'm going home July. I mean, uh, the 4th of July weekend. I think I'm going home, but I get routed to the Turner Hill Terminal in Georgia. Only to come to find out that I was let go. And then I would have to clean out the truck. Dude told me I had 24 hours to clean out their truck. 24 hours to clean out their truck. And I was stranded, damn near stranded. If it wasn't for my son, I was damn near stranded in Tunnel Hill, Georgia, trying to figure out how the fuck to get home. I I, I just got paid. I had I got money in the bank. I couldn't get a I, I couldn't get a rental car for shit because they, they I had my I had my debit card and it was something that they had to do with the debit card. They had to run a credit check and my credit wasn't all that good. I already knew my credit was salt suck. I asked them, was there any alternatives? Is there any money that I need to put cash money down? I, I did any and everything, man. I almost had to rent a fucking U-Haul because U-Haul was the only one that that would have gave me a chance but my son called me up and said hey dad you can use my you can use my credit card and luckily for me me and my son got the same name so i didn't have to all i had to do is just show my id and we're golden we're golden so shout out to my son for helping his father get home for the uh for the for for that little incident man and go check out that video. Check out that video. You know, it's called uh, it's called Abandon. So go check it out. Um, but yeah, if you ever get into a situation like that, you know, it, it and it does happen. It does happen. Uh. So yeah, so yeah, so just um. If you get into any any situation, you know, like that gentleman right there, you know, if you ever get in a, in a situation that you, you know, that you want to leave a company or something like that. Now, if you want to leave the company and leave it on good standing, then, yeah, give them your two weeks notice. You know what I'm saying? Give them a two weeks notice. Let them know, like, hey, you know, here's my two weeks notice and I'm about to bounce. But. If it's a if it's a situation that is really not a good fit for you and that company and said company, then yeah, get up out of there and uh, try to and try to get fit in somewhere else. Like I said before, man, just um, like I said before, what you guys want to do is have some residual money. Have some money saved up when you go to orientation and with and throughout your time with the company. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to get hemmed up in a situation where you can't get back home. You know, you're, you're stranded thousands of miles away. Real un, Understand that these trucking companies is not in your area. So that's another question that you might want to ask the recruiter like, yo, how am I going to get back home once you guys get me up there for whatever reason? Do I got to find my way back home or is you guys going to give me a way back home? And nine times out of ten, these trucking companies will not give you a way back home, period. Even if you, even if you, uh, even if you quit or even if you had a good standing. I had a good standing with U.S. Express. I really did. They gave me 50 fucking dollars. <laughs> the cost of a bus ticket. Dude, I had I had a whole, I had everything in the kitchen sink in my truck. How the hell am I going to get all of that on a bus? I can't. I can't. I, I'm just saying. So what I want you guys to do is just, number one, the first and foremost, first and foremost, never get comfortable with said company. All right. 
maybe after a couple of years, maybe after a year, I say a couple of years, and then maybe you can get a you know get a good feeling. But if you buying your own truck or something like that, then of course it's your truck. You could take it with you. You know what I'm saying? But if it's a company truck, don't get comfortable. All right. If you must put a TV in there, see if you can get with a company that already has a TV in their trucks. There's some there's some companies that do. See if a company already have a microwave in their truck. See if they already have a refrigerator in their truck. Don't get comfortable because anything liable to happen to you out here. You could be the best you could be the best driver at that company. You could be the awesome driver at that company. But I guarantee you and take my word for it. And I'm looking dead at you when I tell you this. If something happens and something can and will, that company will turn their back on you with the quickness. All right? I'm just saying, it could be the best company in the world. It could be one of those companies that you want to retire from. But I guarantee you, if something happens, You, that best company in the world, that company that you want to retire from, they can blackball you real quick. What you doing here? I I just came up here to talk and get the rest of my stuff. Oh, okay. Well, we need you off the property. You don't work here no more. Just saying. It can and will happen. All right. All right, guys, so if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and this is Lockout Men Podcast. If you guys got some topics or or videos or anything that you want me to react to, send them all over to the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. If you want to come on for an interview, I welcome the conversation. Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. All right. And on that note, man, we uh we about to get up out of here, but I'm about to uh I'm about to uh feature my cousin right quick. Who, who is that DJ? Yes, sir. Like DJ Ryan Wolf will play us out. If you're ever in Cleveland and you want to hear him. He's on Z1079. He's the official DJ of the Cleveland Browns. He's the he's, he's everywhere. Check him out on his I, I mean on his Instagram, which is DJ Ryan Wolf. And uh, and more. Until next time, y'all. You guys take it easy and I'll holler at y'all later.